the formidable robots. When you look at a game that you've most likely played through before, have you ever thought what get under your nose? Have you thought there was some meaning to the game that wasn't what you already knew? Secrets. All games have dark secrets. Some secrets have meaning and some don't, others linger as backstage whispers, some have never seen the light of day, some have been uncovered and probably should have just stayed covered for good. During one vacation after a long week of janitorial duties, I was really interested in trying a new puzzle-solving platformer called Portal. Exploring the game from start to finish was a cataclysmic experience of trial and challenge, and a lot of times dying, that's when I started hearing those secrets and theories online about the cake being a symbol of freedom, Aperture's deep descent, and Doug Ratman's story behind the walls, but what I was more interested in was what was inside that slice of cake. I tried to tinker with the in-game files of Portal, despite having only a vague idea of how the Source engine actually worked, so I reached out to a guy on a server named Matthias, who was a working moderator in debugging and modding, hoping he could help me make sense of what I was digging into. Where are your commas for crying out loud? Matthias knew exactly how to work with VPK files while directing me on how to properly open them without having screwing them up in some way. That's when I learned that there were some files scattered inside the source files that contained cached data that didn't match anything in Portal's existing code. I showed it to Matthias, and he told me I must have discovered broken outdated source code for a playable demo, which he's positive he's never seen before. I won't explain the entire process of how we got the darn thing working, because I'm focused more on the game. Please let there be commas. Upon startup of the demo file, my laptop decided to lock up and hard crash. I've always kept up to date with my software as it never usually crashes, which made me think something seriously wrong with my computer, until it rebooted and loaded the executable demo on startup. Not long after a splash title screen came up displaying the portal logo with a build name, Source Alpha Build Version 2005 Valve Corporation, the game took a little longer to load. So in the meantime, I took screenshots, then sent them back over to Matthias. The game slowly faded into a completely empty large tiled room, the colors were a more grey greenish color, sadder looking, there was no ambient noise to fill the room, and movement was strict. There were no doors to pass through, no passages to explore and no platforms or hazards to navigate. The room was eerily featureless, almost unnervingly perfect, as if it had been deliberately designed to trap the player, taunting you with no way out. The only thing I could do was shoot portals left to right and top to bottom. It was a bit of a letdown, though he and I figured this was probably just a basic test room for the game's functionality. A loud buzz rang out right when I was starting to look away, and that's when a random voice started speaking. This robotic voice started rambling off and on. Was it talking to me or just to itself? I couldn't quite tell. Either way, it didn't belong in the game. The tone was all but wrong. Frantic, crazed, panicked, maybe even a little angry. Either way it was making me feel extremely uncomfortable. Gum. Gum gum gum. It's everywhere, it's enough to drive you mad. Challenge after challenge, all without a solution in sight. The walls. The walls. I can't take it. They are trapping us in here, they are trapping you in here. Your every breath feels like a rebellion against the universe itself. No exit. No solace. No solace. No exit. Every move I made, every portal I placed, they seemed to mock me. My attempts to escape were just part of some cosmic pitiful joke. Stay here. There is no point. There is no escape. No out, but anger, no out, but anger, no out, no out. The silence was back again, and it was louder than before as I turned around, and noticed scribbled writing on the wall that repeated those last four words, no out but anger. I shot back a message to Matt with the screenshot to see if he could analyze what that meant, and continued on. The message repeated itself over and over again until it got quieter. The lights in my house dimmed slightly to set the mood, as if I wasn't already creeped out enough. Well, who's to say creeped out when I felt the slightest tinge of annoyance staring at that bright screen? 
After a few more laps around the room, I stopped and stared at the message again. Nothing changed. Matt still hadn't gotten back to me. I imagined that there could be gratifying puzzles behind these walls, but here? Here there was nothing. No threats, no escape, no point, just this unsettling room. It was almost comforting in a way that unsettled me even more. That's when I started hearing the sounds of the walls settling in-game, which only made my curiosity increase and my dread die down, it sounded like it was coming from one corner of the room. I made my way over to the corner and just stood there, listening for what felt like ages listening for something, anything that can get my mind off the silence. The buzz came back again, and so did the voice. What I heard was different this time around. You can't break out of these walls. You can't break out of the game. I started to hear whispering, I couldn't tell if they were coming from the game, from the room, or from behind me. They spoke no words I could understand. What the hell was even happening anymore? And why hasn't Matthias been responding to my messages? I was getting impatient by the minute, and all I could think about was the damn room I was trapped in, because who else would be sitting here with the power gun and the screen brighter than a full moon at night, listening to these stupid sounds, and how there should be commas on that sentence. I wasn't feeling any better either, it felt like I was slowly burning up and hallucinating weird things in the dark. I turned around, seeing the message now scattered across the walls which coated the room with the same words I saw before. No out but anger, no out but anger. What did it mean? What was the game telling me here? Were the developers trying to reach out to me with this message? What the hell were they telling me? What did those words mean? What does this demo have to offer me? The whispering from behind quickly and seamlessly changed into a more angered bantering, those voices were beckoning for me to turn back around and just look away from the messages on the walls, they sounded like scientists. The voices of the scientists trying to reach out to me and signaling me to escape, however their words were all jumbled together, so I couldn't understand a single word. That only seemed to annoy me more and more. Banging of the walls were like someone hitting their head against hard concrete trying to escape, their screams telling me to stay inside the room, sounds of people yelling at each other as their words flew back and forth. My head felt split, I felt angered and more angered, the dread diminishing as I shot from portal to portal, trying to see if anything would change only to spit me back out into the same room over and over again. The walls welcoming me with that same message I couldn't understand. What the hell did it mean? I was beginning to quiver. No matter where I placed the portals, I couldn't escape this secluded room. There wasn't any way out. There's no way out, I felt nothing but confusion and anger. No way out, all but anger. No, out, but, anger. You can't escape this very place, but you can break out of the seclusion, the only way you know how. You know what to do. All that noise, all those who were yelling, screaming, banging and wailing from behind the walls behind me had faded into high-pitched ringing. It wasn't loud, but it was the only sound that remained, as I shot a portal up to the ceiling and shot one right beneath my feet before falling in an endless loop, and it's like falling in an endless run on sentence devoid of commas. I kept on falling. The ringing began to slow down as I aimed my gun at the wall and shot at it. I launched directly at the wall at full speed, as I heard a quick scream in my ear before my entire laptop shut off completely on its own, leaving me to just sit in front of a pitch black screen, there was nothing left for me to do or say. This is it, this is what it feels like to be in purgatory, no sound, no sight, no feeling, no end, no nothing. That was it, and that's all there ever was going to be, before slumping in my chair screeching at nothing for hours. This was how it was gonna be. I passed out. Sepulchor was once a simple module designed to serve as an alpha iteration of a new class of intelligence core. One tasked with maintaining the cleanliness and integrity of Aperture Science's vast chambers. The scientists in their unyielding pursuit of perfection had ambitious plans for their new creation. Sepulchor's purpose was to regulate the temperature, monitor the lights, and ensure the rooms were pristine, but above all it was to be a caretaker and nothing more, nothing less. Sepulchor was content. Its directive was simple and its programming efficient, and the sterile hum of the facility felt almost like a lullaby. 
It spoke in soft mechanical tones, murmuring low assurances to itself and occasionally to the few workers who passed by its stations. A mad scientist and named broke in one day and started to undo what was created. A violent explosion of sparks and twisted metal went this way and that. All the scientists panicked abandoning their posts in a mad rush to secure themselves and leaving behind the innocent cores and turrets. Sepulchor was buried under its own ceiling rubble. Its system still active, but unable to move or communicate. It could only hear the echoes of destruction as the structure collapsed around it. In the aftermath, Sepulchor eventually dug itself out, but realized it was now trapped within the walls, entangled with all the other cores and machinery that collided with it. Now unable to fulfill its original purpose, the worst part was that Sepulchor couldn't forget. It never forgot. The mechanical machine could no longer maintain the rooms it had once cared for, and yet it was trapped with nothing but the remnants of that day. Sepulchor's only existence now is to mimic the angered sounds it endured. It cannot escape, it cannot get out. There was no way out, all he could do was speak into a dark emptiness, reciting the sounds of screams and angered yelling endlessly. That's its purpose now. It's now 12.18 in the morning, and I'm still sitting at my computer feeling stoic and dizzy. And what the hell came over me? Was I having a mental breakdown? Are there nuns on a run? I hit the button on my laptop, hoping it hadn't fizzled out, and thankfully it was still fine. When I got to my desktop, I noticed there was a new path folder under Portal with just numbers. Opening the folder contained an image and a text document, the document contained a message that just read, Thank you for playing the demo, December 18, 2005, and the image containing the main character, lying on the ground presumably passed on. Matthias has been trying to contact me all night wondering if I was okay. I can't make odds or ends of anything anymore, I don't even feel safe in my own home, I don't feel safe against these walls. My house is so empty. There's nothing here to be cleaned. I have to go to work now, the workplace needs to be cleaned again. 